Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this online meeting on a rather uncommon topic, vocationalization of education in schools. And yet, it is a very much relevant in the context of the national education policy of 2020, and also the importance that is given to vocational and skill-based subjects. Before we begin, a request to all those present online to kindly keep your system microphone on mute, switch off your mobile phones and keep them in silent mode, and do not speak or interrupt in between a session as it would distract the speaker and disturb the flow of the presentation. Thank you. Uh, am I audible to the audience listening in? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, Mrs. Nautia, can you hear me? I can, sir. Yeah. Clearly. Thank you very, much. very clearly. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Many of the heads of schools are doing excellent work and have introduced several vocational, skilled, and application-based subjects in their respective schools. Even in the area of the work done with regard to the 10 bagless days, some of the activities of these 10 bagless days have been shared with the CISC and it is very commendable from what we have received. So with that as the context, I will now request our Chief Executive and Secretary, Mr. Aratun, to formally begin today's session with the welcome address and the introduction of our esteemed resource person. Over to you, Mr. Aratun, sir. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, a very warm welcome to each one of you present online, both teachers and principals. <clears throat> the NEP 2020 has spurred us all into looking ahead and transforming our schools through the various reforms which have been recommended in the policy. One such area is the emphasis on vocational and skill-based subjects and the importance accorded to them. But rather than just looking at these subjects in isolation today's, in today's discussion, we'll focus on vocationalization of education in schools, thereby taking a more holistic view on it. It is therefore both my privilege and honor to introduce you to our resource person for today's discussion, Mr. Vinay Sarup Mehrotra. Dr. Mehrotra is professor or and head of curriculum development and evaluation center and Center for International Relationships at the PSS, Central Institute of Vocational Education, a constituent unit of National Council of Education Research and Training under the Ministry of Education, Government of India. He is also the coordinator of the Univoc Network Center at Bhopal. Thank you very much, Dr. Mehrotra, for taking time out of your ever busy schedule and being with us this morning. Your expertise and guidance in the related topic for today will surely be of immense value and importance, not just to the CISCE as a board, but also to all the heads of schools present from across the country and abroad too. So with that, I now hand you over to Dr. Vinay 
स्वरूप मेहरोत्रा टू टेक दिस ऑनलाइन सेशन फॉरवर्ड ओवर टू डॉक्टर मेहरोत्रा गुड मॉर्निंग एंड नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल एनफ am i clear yes sir yes sir please yeah thank you very much so uh to start with uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, the chairman cisc dr g emion nul the chief executive and secretary of cisc mr gary arathon and all the officials of the cisc for inviting me to this a uh, webinar on vocationalization of school education that's what i am going to talk today and as we are all aware and it was also mentioned right now that it's a very uncommon topic and as we are all aware that vocational education always had that kind of social stigma attached to it we have never given due importance to the skill development earlier and that is why we have been promulgating rote learning producing more of clerks rather than people who would build the country and that is why today we have 93% of the workforce in the unorganized sector rather than being in the organized sector and implications of that has been that people are not getting the necessary social benefits that they deserve we have not been able to provide necessary social benefits to our farmers who are the producers to the people who are into the manufacturing industry the people who are in the service sector and as a result we are still grappling with issues of human rights of social rights and all those rights that we have been talking about for so many years because we have always thought that education can build a country but the people who are not educated or illiterate or neoliterate cannot build the country so we have to change that kind of mindset first the reason being it's not just about what we are doing but how we are doing the processes that we need to look at gandhi ji had said that the education should, system should be built on the foundation of linking and art and head the three h concept that he has promulgated through the basic education system that needs to be there the nay taleem in which the which was emphasized through the zakir hussain committee now what i am going to talk today is about how we can change or modify the current education system by putting emphasis on skill development and why is it necessary we have been seeing all these things uh, but we have not been able to uh, bring about that kind of paradigm shift in our thinking as well in the processes but the new education policy that is the national education policy 2020 has actually emphasized skill development all through the early ages to school education through higher education through various other institutions like industrial training institutes polytechnics a uh, national institute of open schooling that means this open schooling system that has been focused on in the national education policy 2020 i'll be talking about that also i'll also be discussing about the implementation of vocational education in schools so that you are all aware about so thank you very much for joining me on this webinar so thank you all the participants i can see so many um curious faces i would say and i hope i'll be able to do justice in terms of giving the necessary inputs that you require to implement vocationalization of education in schools so i'll because of a paucity of time i'll straight away start with the presentation 
and then we'll have more discussion uh, on it because I want that it should be more of an interactive session rather than uh, one-way communication. So I hope you can see the presentation. Can anyone confirm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, very good. Thank you. So coming to the first slide, which I which says about vocationalization of education in schools. And as uh, already mentioned by uh, Mr. Gary Erathon, that I am uh, the head of uh, professor and head of curriculum development and evaluation center and center for international relationships at the uh, Pandit Sundarla Sharma Central Institute of Vocational Education, which is a constituent unit of National Council of Educational Research and Training and the Ministry of Education, Government of India. And this institute is located at Bhopal. So my uh, presentation is divided into four uh, dimensions. One is uh, evolution of vocational education and training in India. Second on Samagra Siksha and National Education Policy 2020. Third is on vocational curriculum and textbook development. And the fourth is on implementation of vocational education in schools. So uh, coming to the evolution of vocational education in India, if you see the slide, uh, uh, would you like me to put it on slideshow? Or is it okay with this? Because at times, you know. So uh, slideshow will be better, sir. Better, okay. Yeah. I'll add that yeah. Uh, is it visible now, clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Now, Coming to the craftsman training scheme, which was initiated way back in 1950, and this scheme is being implemented in industrial training institutes uh, for so many years. But with the introduction of the National Skill Qualifications Framework in 2013, the courses of these uh, craftsman training scheme are being aligned with the NSQ. So this is one development which is taking place. The other is they are also developing their infrastructure to provide necessary uh, futuristic skills to the students. Like if I talk about lathe machine, uh, which is mainly used in manufacturing of parts and all. Uh, CNC machines have taken over. So that kind of advancement is taking place in terms of the facilities. And in terms of the software and all, new softwares are being brought in, uh, the courses are being modified. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, the vocational courses are dynamic in nature. So we have to keep on upgrading the facilities and also the curriculum accordingly, the teaching, training, industry linkages, all which I'll be talking about in this presentation have to be upgraded or updated from time to time. Kothari Commission report, as you are all aware in 1964-66, emphasized about the 10 plus two pattern in our school. Whereas now the national education policy 2020 says the structure should be five plus three plus three plus four, which I will be talking about later. And they also emphasized on introduction of work experience and diversification of students into academic and vocational streams at the plus two level. National Education Policy 1986 uh, um, promulgated the introduction of vocational education as a distinct stream. And this you might be all aware that in 1988, a centrally sponsored scheme of vocationalization of uh, secondary and higher secondary education was introduced uh, to bring about uh, necessary uh, streamlining of uh, the uh, vocational education implementation in schools. And this was done through the uh, classes 11th and 12th. So there were courses like agriculture, horticulture, you know, uh, engineering and technology, but these were very broad based courses and it was a separate stream in which the students had to opt for it. So they were not studying general education subjects. They were studying only the vocational subjects. So as a result, what happened that they, these students after passing out were not getting admission into higher education. 
So that was uh, one of the uh, hurdle which was there. The second was the students were not also getting employment because they were not competent enough to get jobs. Why? Because industry linkages were not established by the schools and as a result, they were not becoming employable nor getting the employable, employment skills. So these are the issues that were there. The teachers were not trained on the industry uh, specific uh, competencies. So as a result, it was more merely a theoretical kind of vocational education which was going on. So uh, the scheme closed down uh, in 2006. Most of the states had closed the scheme. And then the Ministry of Education, which was earlier Ministry of Human Resource Development, started revising the scheme in 2006. And I was also associated with the revision of the scheme, drafting the scheme, also drafting the National Vocational Education Qualifications Framework at that time. So we had done this exercise and through various approvals and all those things that happened, discussions at various levels, uh, the scheme was revised and was launched in 2012, along with the National Vocational Education Qualifications Framework. As you can see on the slide, that the revised centrally sponsored scheme of vocationalization of secondary education was introduced in 2012, along with the NVEQF. Now, why this we have brought this NVEQF? It was brought in to streamline the vocational education, to integrate vocational education with general education, and to uh, to facilitate smooth transition of the students from the school to the world of work. That is also very important when we talk about social stigma attached to the vocational education. See, it is by the word of mouth that people would be speaking about certain education or education system when we are able to prove that it is being objectively done and the outcomes are as per the spirit of that scheme. So it's very important for the implementers to ensure that the scheme is implemented in the right spirit, uh, with clearly with the objectives of it. So like you can see now, uh, we have uh, also the National Policy on Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, which was launched way back in 2015. And it's uh, it mentions that uh, the skilling is to be done at scale with speed and standard and sustainability. And that is how we are now implementing aggressively the skill development uh, in our country. Now, if you remember, or you might have heard that our Honorable Prime Minister, Shri Naren Modi ji, has said that skilling is building a better India. And if we have to move India towards developing or development, then skill development should be our mission. So the skill development in India is being done in a mission mode. And that is why we can see so much of development in the uh, in our skill development ecosystem. Now, Samagri Siksha was introduced in 2018 by subsuming the erstwhile centrally sponsored scheme of Sarv Siksha Abhyan, Rashtri Madhmi Siksha Abhyan, teacher education and vocationalization of secondary and higher secondary education. Now, if we look at the uh, National Education Policy 2020, it says reimagining vocational education. Uh, somebody is actually putting lines. Okay, now fine. Okay. So National Education Policy 2020 has mentioned that we need to reimagine vocational education in order to do away with that social stigma attached to it. So it proposes a multidisciplinary approach to education, allowing students to choose subjects across various domains. And if you have seen the draft National Curriculum Framework, which is available on the website of the Ministry of Education uh, or the NCR, you'll see that it proposes that a basket of subjects would be offered and students will be uh, selecting 10 uh, out of uh, uh, 16, eight courses would be available. And then 
in, in this will be in 9th and 10th. So then in 11, 12, they will have again a basket of courses in which the core courses would be there, then uh, elective or specialized courses would be offered by them. Uh, it is still in the draft stage. The final uh, national curriculum framework for school education is going to be there or, or will be launched soon. Then you can go through that and see what are the changes that are taking place in terms of vocational education also. So early childhood care and education, uh, it's, this framework has already been released. Uh, and this uh, school education national curriculum framework is going to be released soon. So NEP 2020 also recommends removing the hard distinction between art, science, and commerce, and between curricular, co-curricular, and extracurricular activities, and between vocational education and general education. So NEP focuses on flexible curricular structure and multidisciplinary learning. And it says that at least 50% of the learners through the school and higher education system shall have exposure to vocational education by 2025. We also now have the Samagra Siksha 2.0, which was introduced in 2021, and it will continue up to 31st March 2026. This is the revised scheme. Then we have a national skills qualifications framework. So this has been revised. As I mentioned earlier, this was it launched in 2013. Now this has been revised to from 10 levels to eight levels. So I would be sharing some of the links on the chat uh, where you can uh, you can just copy that those links for those institutions and websites, and uh, you can go through uh, these documents which are available on the website. So I'm not going to discuss in detail all these things because of the paucity of time. Now, national credit uh, framework has also been launched, and uh, the Various institutions, including CBSC, is working on developing the standard operating procedure for introduction of credit-based courses in schools. National Higher Education Qualification Framework has been developed. I was also part of this committee, uh, which developed this uh, National Higher Education Qualifications Framework. And this has already been launched by the U UGC University Grants Commission. Now, uh, you might be all aware about this Samagra Siksha, so I'll just quickly go through it. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details, but as you can see here, that the focus is on learning outcomes. Now, this is what we have to keep in mind, that whatever vocational education or program that we are implementing, whether it's pre-vocational education, vocational education, or even the general education, we have to focus on learning outcomes rather than the, just the learning objectives or the inputs that we have been doing so. Now, just to emphasize on that, I'll just tell you a story about two friends who met after pandemic. And uh, one of the friends was uh, having a dog with him, Tommy. So he said, uh, uh, the other friend asked, what you did during pandemic? He said, I taught Tommy how to whistle. So the friend was very much surprised. He said, oh, this is amazing. You have done a wonderful job. I mean, I just can't think of a dog, you know, whistling. He said, yes, you can just test him. Okay, fine. I'll just talk to Tommy and say, whistle. So he said to Tommy, oh, okay, Tommy, whistle, whistle, whistle. Tommy started barking. He said, no, it's not whistling. You said, you taught him how to whistle, but he's barking. He said, you didn't listen to me properly. I said, I taught him. I didn't say he learned it. This is the difference that we need to bring about in terms of teaching learning. What is happening? We say, we have covered the syllabus. I have taught so many classes. I've taken so many periods. I've done my job. But whether the learners have learned or not, that needs to be tested from time to time. And that is why we have been focusing on formative evaluation rather than just a summative evaluation. We had CC earlier, comprehensive, uh, continuous comprehensive evaluation. 
but we have not been implement we have not been able to implement it in the right spirit and that is why nobody now talks about cc so uh, we have to really think of various means and ways of ensuring that learning outcomes are achieved and that is why the vocational curriculum that we have developed are learning outcomes based and if you see the curriculum format the template way that we have developed it starts with learning outcome so we have the learning outcome then the theory then practical and what are those activities that are to be performed in order to see that the learning outcomes are achieved uh, for that particular theory and practical that we would be conducting so this is the kind of curriculum or uh, the shift uh, in terms of developing the curriculum that we have to bring about rather than just giving the outline of the curriculum because outline of the syllabus that we give is not going to really uh, help a teacher or the assessor to assess what are those competencies that needs to be tested now when i talk about competencies competency means the knowledge skills and the attitude that we have and we have never bothered about testing the attitude or observing at least during the training program because our system is mainly based on examination paper pencil test so we are not able to assess whether the child has developed that kind of attitude or the ability to perform on the job or not so for example if i talk about the researches that we have done one of the uh, very amazing uh, finding that we have had in one of the districts in madhya pradesh sihor we went to schools we had talked to the students about their aspirations and preferences you know most of the children they said they want to become doctors engineers or get into army air force navy and all those things then we asked them what would you like to become if you are not able to get into one of these occupations or professions they said teacher that means in our country teacher is the last resort where it should be the first thing that student should aspire but unfortunately we don't have that we haven't created that kind of system where students aspire to become teachers they are not passionate about becoming teachers whereas if you look at countries like finland which is said to be the uh, the best education system which has the highest happiness index all those things are there but if you talk to their children they would say that they would like to become teachers this is the shift that we need to bring about through our education system so guidance and counseling should not just focus on becoming so and so they should also focus on telling children about the importance of being a good teacher about being a good principal or head of the institution uh, about becoming a good lawyer about becoming a good doctor why i'm saying good good is very important here it's not just becoming lawyer or teacher or whatever it's you have to be a good lawyer you have to be a good teacher you have to be efficient teacher efficient principal efficient so if we talk of efficiency then proficiency gets into that so we are not assessing the proficiency level of our children we are just testing their recall power through these examination systems now if i talk about typing for example uh, we we are not just seeing how many letters or words a person is able to type what we are seeing is whatever it's required you can do on your own whatever you require so that is why we are doing it in an unorganized way so we have to have performance criteria in place once we set the performance criteria just like the speed of typing so it can be simple it can be more complex so i'll give you one example of that simple is like you just testing the speed and saying today you have to type at a speed of 10 words per minute and a uh, year after you should be able to type at a speed of 20 words per minute or 40 words per minute 
But if you want to make it complex, you can say you have to type at a speed of 20 words per minute without any grammatical mistake then you can, or spelling mistake. So that is how you can make your performance criteria more complex. So you can have simple performance criteria and you can have complex performance criteria in order to test the proficiency of the child in performing on those competencies. So this is just one example. So, uh, so what is NEP is emphasizing on is to give vocational exposure to all the children in the schools so that they understand the importance of competency-based learning and assessment. And they are involved into skill-based activities or work-based activities. So working with hands, dignity of labor gets built into the whole system. So we have to emphasize on work-based activities in our schools so that the boundaries between the bookish knowledge and application of knowledge uh, get reduced. And we are also helping them in deciding the future career path. So this is very important. So multi-skill activities. We have to promote multi-skilling in our schools. Why? Because we have to ensure that Students not just learn hard skills, but also the soft skills, such as aesthetic values, cooperation, teamwork, judicious use of raw materials. We have been teaching our children environment education or environment science for so many years. But what has been the impact? We don't see in the world of work or in our daily lives. We have to really tell our children, bhai batti band karo, pankhe mat chalao, faltu mein AC kyon chal raha hai? Today also we are struggling with this kind of statement. Why? Because the schools have not been able to make them realize the importance of sustainable development. So if we want to achieve these uh, 17 sustainable development goals, we have to tell our children that this is how we have to. So it has to be the habit, not just awareness. So we have been creating awareness a lot, but not the habit. So from awareness to habits can be done only when they are doing it. So learning by doing, we have to focus in our schools. All the schools would introduce vocationalization of education from classes six to eight. General education teachers of languages, mathematics, science, social science, art, music, and work experience would be involved. We have been promoting individualized education in our schools. Why I'm saying because we look at the child as an individual. We are teaching them. We are assessing them as individuals. We are not promoting teamwork. It's only through some activities where they are doing teamwork, like sports-based activities, where children are all the projects and all when we are giving to them uh, that two group projects, then only they are learning uh, these cooperation, teamwork, and judicious use of raw materials, creativity, quality consciousness, and all those things. So we have to promote teamwork in our schools. And this is possible when we promote uh, collaborative learning, cooperative learning, uh, learning together, learning by doing together. All these concepts have to be inbuilt in our education system. So just to summarize the recommendations of the national education policy, there should not be any hard separation, recognizing unique capabilities, multidisciplinarity, creativity and critical thinking has to be promoted, synergy in curriculum. Now, all these things have we have to take care of. Now, if I talk about the curricular structure and pedagogy that has been suggested in the national education policy, the new pedagogical structure has been proposed as 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, foundational, preparatory, middle, and secondary stage. Now, as you can see, the, the, the grades have been mentioned. So there's also a shift from the terminology from using class to grades now. So we have to also see that whenever we are mentioning that uh, the class, we can see it, uh, term it as grade instead of using the word class. Now, vocational exposure at the middle stage. So what are we aiming at in terms of vocational exposure? Pre-vocational education. So we have already developed the guidelines for pre-vocational education. 
NCRT has published that guideline. Uh, it will be launched very soon. So it will be made available on the website of NCRT as well as PSSCIB. You can download those guidelines. So we have um, given two approaches in that guidelines. One is theme-based activities you need to organize. Second is sector-based activities. So theme-based activities, like you can take one theme, vermicompost production, around which teachers would be teaching the various subjects, say, for example, language, math, science, social science. Uh, the sector-based approach is based on the vocational education. So wherever vocational subjects are introduced, vocational teachers can conduct those activities for all the students. And they learn through those uh, activities what are the various occupations available for that particular activity. So vocational interest inventory, we have developed the online vocational interest inventory where teachers can assess the uh, interest of the students for various occupations. Bagless days, um, as was mentioned by Mr. Gary, that uh, we have, you some of the schools have already introduced the bagless days and you can uh, implement those activities in your schools. So we have uh, issued the guidelines for the backless days, which is available on the website of our institute. Local arts and crafts. So we have to promote Lok Vidya. Indigenous arts and crafts available around uh, the school or in the district. So you identify some of those uh, activities and you can organize those activities in your school. Integrated pedagogy, so where discovery-based learning, inquiry-based teaching learning methods are to be adopted. And skill development and digital literacy, coding, artificial intelligence, all these things have to be implemented at the middle stage. So there would be three uh, components of the pre-vocational education. One would be vocational orientation. Second is vocational awareness. And the third is vocational exploration. So students will be able to uh, describe their abilities, motivation, interests, and aptitude. They will perceive their relationship to the world of work. Vocational exploration will help students to identify the place in the world by exploring various vocations or occupations and the importance in becoming productive citizens. So at uh, grade six to eight, we have to bring about vocational exposure link theory with practice, identify activities and tasks in various sectors, and we have to focus on achieving learning outcomes. Student portfolio is one of the very important aspect of vocational education. So if we help our children to develop these student portfolios for all the activities that they organize or they participate in the um, throughout the year through the vocational education or socially useful productive work or work ex work education. So we have to uh, really promote this student portfolio in our schools. Internship programs you can organize uh, by inviting uh, local experts or taking students to the various workshops where they learn the local art and craft. Uh, it could be through pre-vocational education or bagless days. Then at the secondary stage, greater choice of vocational subjects are going to be offered. Today, we have two vocational subjects in each school. But in years to come, there will be a large number of vocational subjects that would be introduced in schools, and students will have more choice uh, for offering these vocational subjects. Career guidance and counseling, uh, skill-based aptitude tests uh, need to be administered. Vertical mobility of vocational students have to be identified and told to all the students that these are the various avenues for vertical mobility. The courses like bachelor in vocation, master's in vocation, all these things have to be told to our students. Flexibility in curriculum. Then uh, how we enhance access uh, to vocational education and make vocational education inclusive. So we can uh, think of short-term certificate programs being introduced in the schools, uh, which just not uh, help a child to learn certain skills, but also uh, we can reduce the gender gap. You know, 
provide more gender sensitivity uh, uh, remove that kind of gender stereotyping for example in beauty and wellness courses in automotive sector so mostly the girls they opt for beauty and wellness uh, courses boys they generally opt for automotive courses so we need to encourage our students to opt uh, both these kinds of courses so both girls and boys uh, and we have done this thing in our demonstration multipurpose schools of ncrt where we have uh, provided opportunities by uh, customizing the cu curriculum uh, putting more focus on hair styling rather than just mainly application makeup and all because boys would generally opt for competencies like hair styling so if you provide opportunities as per the gender, then the, you will be encouraging the enrollment of those uh, students uh, in those vocational courses. So these are some kind of uh, changes that you need to bring at the local level in order to promote uh, uh, these uh, gender, uh, rather to do away with this gender stereotyping. Assessment should focus on foundational skills, co core concepts, higher order skills, and demonstration of learning outcomes. And as you are all aware that the NEP 2020 has uh, promulgated holistic 360 degree assessment and a multi-dimensional report card is to be given to the child uh, when he or she passes uh, the course. Uh, the template for which the NCRT is, is developing and I and I suppose that this, this will come very soon. So a development of curricula and textbook is being done by the PSS Central Institute of Vocational Education for the vocational subjects. Curriculum is based on national application standards for the job roles approved by the National Council for Vocational Education Training under MSD. Learning outcome-based curricula are being developed. There's theory, practical, and on-the-job training or field visits component. List of equipment and material has been provided in the curriculum, and teacher's qualification has been mentioned in the curriculum. Now, when uh, I'll just quickly go through this uh, process of development of vocational curricula and textbooks that we are doing. Uh, we do the need assessment, determine the sp uh, specific industry or occupations for which they vocational curriculum or the textbook is to be developed, define learning outcomes, which should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Then uh, the structure of the curriculum, uh, we organize the curriculum into units that cover different aspects of the industry or occupation. And each module should focus on essential skills and knowledge required for that particular occupation. We align with, with the industries and standards, which is there in the form of national occupation standards for the job roles. Then we include practical exercises to provide learners uh, apply their theoretical knowledge in the real world scenarios. We are then developing the textbook content uh, by engaging you know, uh, experts, subjects experts, educators, curriculum developers and stakeholders. And it has case studies, images, diagrams, questions and exercises for reinforcing learning. Now, these are the subjects, uh, vocational subjects, which are being introduced by CISC. Uh, that is assistant beauty therapist, assistant hair stylist, domestic data entry operator, dietetic aid, uh, cashier, physical activity facilitator. There has been some change of the names by the National Council for Vocational Education Training uh, along with the sec respective sector skill council. So you can note the change. Uh, there are two job roles in which uh, there has been a change in the names of those, retail cashier and physical education assistant early years. So coming to the vocational pedagogy, we talk about pedagogy, which is the art and science of teaching. But when it comes to vocational pedagogy, it is the art, science, and craft of teaching. So we have to really promote the craft as the center of all the activities that we are going to organize as part of the vocational education. Learner-centered approach has to be there. Blended uh, learning approach uh, is to be adopted where we need to encourage an online courses 
uh, through Scale India Digital, virtual simulations, e-learning platforms, and interactive multimedia. Soft skills development we have to promote where teamwork, problem solving, time management, and others. And we have built this and built this through the employability curriculum, uh, which has five components, communication skills, self-management, ICT, entrepreneurship skills, and green skills. And with regard to the hard skills development, these are skills are typically specific to the uh, occupation. And uh, they have to be, they can be easily quantified, like I mentioned about the typing speed as compared to the uh, soft skills. Career counseling and guidance has to be there to enable the children to explore different career paths, identify their strengths, and align their interests with the various vocational opportunities. Support services have to be provided through remedial classes and job placement opportunities. Continuous industry engagement. So we need to ensure that the local industry professionals, experts are involved in uh, training uh, for organizing expert lectures, for field visits, on the job training. All these things have to be done uh, by the school. Mentorship and apprenticeship. So as you might be aware that there's an Apprentices Act 1961, which was amended in 2014 to include the vocational subjects as optional trades or optional subjects. Uh, so even a student uh, who has completed 14 years can now go for apprenticeship training. Earlier it was 18 years. Now the age has been reduced to 14 years to enable students who have passed out grade eight uh, to get into apprenticeship training in an in industry. But that has to be uh, the uh, non-hazardous industry. It should not be any hazardous industry. So this, these, uh, these things you can read more because time is not that much. It's only one hour that I got and so I'm just speeding up this, these slides uh, just to finish the presentation on time. So industry experienced teachers are instructors with real world expertise or the world of work expertise they should have. Guidance and counseling, subject matter, communication, soft skills, vocational pedagogy, classroom management, use of ICT and technology assessment. These are the various aspects on which the teachers have to be trained through induction training and in-service training. Then uh, the scheme of studies, vocational subjects are to be compulsory in grades 9th and 10th and optional in grades 11th and 12th. At least three periods are to be allocated in a week. On-the-job training is a very important component of vocational education. Uh, 80 hours have been kept, so one can divide 40 hours uh, in a year, so over the two years, like class 9th and 10th or grade 9th and 10th, and then grade 11th and 12th. Field visit, at least three field visits in a year. Credit-based system is to be implemented in schools. So as I mentioned earlier, national credit framework is already in place. So things are going on how to implement the credit-based uh, system in our schools. So once we have the standard operating procedure for the, uh, for the credit-based system, We'll be implementing that in schools to provide more choices to our students and the flexibility in terms of learning. So performance-based assessment and evaluation, hands-on. Uh, so when we say hands-on learning, we have to do hands-on assessment also to evaluate students' performance or proficiency in performing certain specific tasks or procedures in that particular vocational field. Assessments may involve using tools, equipment, or software relevant to the industry. Assessors should assign real-world projects or tasks uh, related to the workplace scenarios, and they should be evaluated based on the ability to complete these tasks effectively, demonstrating their practical skills and problem-solving ability. Here, I would uh, like to tell an uh, example of a nurse who takes a thermometer, washes the tip of the thermometer, puts it under the tongue of the patient, takes it out after one and a half minute and says that you don't have temperature anymore. Now here, three things are very important in assessment. One is the tool. 
the second is the condition and the third is the time. So when we are doing assessment in vocational education, we have to consider these three dimensions particularly. The tool should be appropriate, sharpened, and as per the standards. Two, the condition should remain the same for the training as well as the assessment. Three, the time to be given, sufficient time should be given uh, for assessment of that particular task to be performed by the learner or SSE. Now, assessment and evaluation, we have divided into written tests, practical tests, and viva voce and student portfolio. So these are the four aspects of the four dimensions on which you have to assess the child and see whether he or she has acquired the necessary competencies that you are testing him or her for. Certification is to be, I mean, we have dual certification system as of now, certification by the examination board and industry recognized certification. This is mainly done by the NSDC along with these respective sector skill councils. At the higher education level, uh, you might be all aware that these are the changes which are being proposed uh, or uh, as per the National Education Policy 2020, multidisciplinary approach and researches, multi-entry and multi-exit options, master's degree of one year, master's degree program of two year, where the second year will uh, entirely focus on research, integrated UG and PG degree of five year will continue and discontinuation of the MPhil program. Now here I'm going to show you the use of AI. We talk of artificial intelligence, how we can, this are developed using the freeware um, we, uh, software available on the internet. So you just have to type the text and um, do this kind of um, changes in the animation and automatically you get a video like this. So just taking a picture, you can create an AI based video. So I'll just show you. So I have just typed the text and this you can see how the person is speaking. So we can produce such videos now using the text for the various textbooks or vocational skills that we want to promote. So thank you very much for that patient hearing. I'll be sharing some of the links uh, for the various websites on the chat box now, and you can uh, access those websites. Now we can have some question answer uh, on this and then if time permits, I can also show you some of the uh, links there, uh, websites. If you can uh, raise your hands, Dr. Mehatra will answer your questions. Then session begins. Yeah. Asustos Sharma. Unmute Hello. yourself and speak. Yeah, good morning, sir. Hopefully, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my question is basically regarding the new syllabus of class 9 and 10 using AI and robotics. Uh, the, my, my question is that, uh, of course, the students who, uh, who are in class 8 nowadays, they will be in class 10 by that time, right? So right. we can teach them Python and uh, AI and so on, right? <clears throat> so that's not an issue. But what about the class nine students who are in present nine? So they have done half of Java already. So how can we manage them to shift altogether to uh, like uh, to the next session to AI and Python? We have to send a mail regarding this. Oh. I, I think uh, this is something which you are asking to the secretary, not me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can write, Asutosh Sharma, yeah. you can write to us. We will answer okay. you. Okay, right. thank you. Thank you. Yes. You can ask questions related to vocational education or whatever I discussed here. Kavita, unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, good morning, sir. <clears throat> Actually, no, 
we have started this backlist day activities and through that we are integrating vocationalization is that okay or should we have to have it separately see uh, as i mentioned earlier that at the middle stage which is from grade 6 to 8 uh, we are implementing two aspects one is backlist days the second is pre vocational education now why why we need to have backlist days we need to understand that first we have been uh, teaching our students about you know the text through textbooks a lot of knowledge we have been imparting but they were not able to acquire those skills and skills require time practicing this is a famous saying practice makes a man perfect but actually who makes a man perfect it's the woman who makes the man perfect because <laughs> because there also it's banned there women so basically we need to understand this that we have to ensure that children get opportunity to do lot of practice for a particular task like if you see uh, in our system uh, those who have become good cricketers uh, sachin tendulkar and dhoni and all those things we we know many other names you know so uh, what what they had done they had gone to the field they have practiced day and night they didn't bother about their education although we call them as school dropouts or college dropouts or whatever steve jobs or for example uh, bill uh, bill clinton you know many of them they they had uh, bill gates sorry bill gates they they have been a college dropout or they have left their education for some time why because they believed in practicing or doing things through experiential learning rather than just focusing on rote learning so we have to bring about that kind of shift in our education system where we have textbook centric learning teacher centric learning all these learning methods or the teaching methods that have we have been promulgating over the years have to be i mean there has to be a paradigm shift from rote learning to experiential learning so we need to give sufficient time to our students to understand the importance of these various occupations and the tasks being performed by people who are in these occupations So what we can do we can invite doctors we can invite air hostesses we can invite pilots we can invite all these people that are from different professions okay. and let them talk to these children during these backless days how they became doctor and what are the various ethical aspects that they need to consider when they are in that profession if you look at the it industry how systematically they have developed because they have very strict protocols for doing things they have to go through security checks uh and they then only they launch the software they are not launching the software like anything but in our education system what we have done we are just pushing things through and and we are also pushing them through the grades also without ensuring that they are competent enough to perform on the job that is what we have to ensure so through these backless days what we can do is we identify certain competencies that these are the competencies that will be developed across the students let's say for example you know uh, in agriculture nursery practices so let's take today vermi composting we'll be doing this activity so that children understand the importance of earthworms in our life in the farmer's life in the soil and also they will learn how the biodegradable waste can be converted to compost which we can utilize for sustainable development Okay. similarly for green energy so let's today do these activities like you know cleaning the bulb cleaning tube lights 
putting off the lights, going to the classroom, putting off the lights and seeing, make it a habit during these bagless days. So what they will be practicing is when they go back into the world of work, they will be practicing. And this is how various countries have ensured that these practices become habit. If time permits, I can show you one or two videos which will uh, convince you that where we are lacking. I'll show you one video of South Korea. It's just three or four minutes, which I took when I was in South Korea. I took it on the screen. This is a government school, Choinbok's government uh, science domestic school, which is implementing uh, vocational courses. Uh, Mr. Gary Arathon? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I hope no problem. You have, you have time? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Five minutes, I'll take. Uh, 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 sir, uh, while sharing the, your screen, uh, there is a uh, checkbox in the left-hand corner. Share your system audio. So if you click that, so audio will be audible for everyone. You can just stop sharing and share it again. Yeah. Uh, now, while click on the share screen, sir, there is a uh, uh, checkbox on the left-hand corner. Share sound. Yeah, yes, sir. Share system sound. Okay. dormitory with an attached gym and reading room, labs with state-of-the-art facilities and equipment designed by the NCS curriculum. The school built the Global Education Support Center for the Gyeongsang Bukdo Office of Education in order to cultivate global talent who will be capable of making their dreams come true throughout the world. To educate these talented individuals, imbuing them with an international mindset, the center supports them in getting an IELTS certificate and taking courses for global cooking qualifications. Additionally, by providing students with opportunities for overseas employment through global field trips, the center helps them to have international competitiveness. As one of the industry-driven apprenticeship schools designated by the Ministry of Education, Skin Care, in cosmetology, students study and work both in school and at businesses in parallel with an in-the-field training. They can be hired on graduation and grow up to be professional specialists. Gyeongbuk Domestic Science High School has the Department of Culinary Arts and Department of Skin Care and Cosmetology, which most students prefer to enter and which has the highest employment rate among specialized high schools. In the Department of Culinary Arts, students can get the Craftsman Cook Certificate for Korean foods, Western foods, Japanese foods, and Chinese foods, and the license of patisserie, so they can go on to be the best cooks in the world. After graduation, these students get positions in hotels, restaurants, schools, hospitals, or elsewhere. In the Department of Skin Care and Cosmetology, students get licenses to be hair, skin, nail, or makeup professional stylists who create healthy and unique beauty. After graduating, they can get a job at a hairdresser's, a skincare salon, a dermatologist's office, a wedding shop, or elsewhere. The school also has a connection with related majors of a university and employed students can enter the university with the advantage of special admissions for specialized high school graduates.
meet the varied of humanistic education that cultivates creative talent with wholesome characters. The major clubs run by the students themselves help them prepare all the steps necessary for starting ventures, planning, marketing, promotion, and sales. Other clubs and sports activities allow students to relieve their stress and have enjoyable school lives. The Department of Employment and Careers, consisting of teachers who are well informed about jobs, find excellent companies that can guarantee students human rights and safety in order to give students field experiences. To reinforce students' job capabilities, all the students participate in after-school foreign language courses, even getting licenses related to their majors. They can also have one-on-one -on -one mock job interviews, real job interviews for excellent graduates, special lectures from outside experts, and participation in the Korean Food Project. In addition, as a popular job specialized high school, most of the project budget is invested in various activities to help students discover their future careers. As a result, they have established excellent records in the regional skill contests, national skill contests, and others. They are building up their own successful futures in the areas in which they excel and are happy by working as public officers, teachers, and employees of companies of all sizes. When I entered Gyeongbuk Domestic Science High School, I got a lot of licenses by taking specialized classes, and I was sure of what I should do after graduation by going to various events and contests. With help from the school, I became a full-time employee at Kyungju Hilton Hotel, entering there as a new student. I hope many of you can walk down the path towards becoming a cook like I did and create new trends as a leader. I've been on my way as a teacher since I learned so much from this school. I will always support my juniors who want to become teachers in the future like me. Full of expectations and hope for the future, the students enjoy learning. With a variety of specialized education options, a school is a happy place for discovering dreams and talent. Gyeongbu Domestic Science High School. Maya Subramaniam Sukumar Acha. So, uh, um, just to. Yeah. So, just yes, to, con yeah, yes, just to conclude, uh, I would like to inform you all that uh, I'm a product of uh, St. Joseph's College, Allahabad, which is now known as Prayagraj. Yes, uh, which is yeah. The council's uh, board was there, and um, whatever learnings I had from that school has made me this uh, what I am today. So I would like to acknowledge and thank all the principals and teachers uh, who were there to groom me to this uh, what I am today. So it's be it's because of the gurus you know, that uh, we develop our knowledge, skills, and abilities. And if you go to Mahabharat, uh, you have seen that Arjun was groomed to be an archer and Bhim was groomed to be a Gadadari, based on the abilities, not just by, you know, uh, offering subjects. And they were learning all kinds of skills, like living skills, life skills, 21st century skills, all those kinds of skills, which made them the best warrior. So this is uh, what we have to bring in in our education system, where our education system is very good, the best in the world, I would say. But we have to focus more on competencies. The reason being, uh, now, now we have more jobs in private sector. 
uh, we have gig economy and circular economy. All these things are happening now. Very few government jobs are there. So we have to really prepare our children for the future skills, for future jobs, and help them to survive uh, by uh, focusing on stress management, you know, that's time management, stress management. Uh, because as is being said that with more luxuries, we become more lethargic. And uh, it is happening, and we can see you now with the technology being used, like mobiles, uh, it's becoming a more of a time waster than you know helping us in. <laughs> so we and now countries like China and all they are going to ban uh, use of mobiles, or they are going to restrict uh, use of mobiles by the students. So first we promote all these things, and then we restrict. So this is well because making it happen and then restricting them to use that. But we have to teach our children about the judicious use of technology and resources. These are very important. And this will come through action, not just by talking. Thank you very much for this opportunity, uh, Mr. Gary Arito. Oh, and good. thank you all for patient hearing. Uh, okay. I think because of paucity of time, Dr. Mehrotra is not able to take the questions. So I would request all of you, please mail the questions to us and uh, we will forward the same to Dr. Mehrotra with a request to him that he would give us responses to the questions so that that would help schools to implement vocationalization of education more effectively. So without a doubt, we have all been competently enlightened on the subject of vocationalization of education in schools. Through the delightful presentation of Dr. Vinay Swaroop Mehrotra and his mastery over the subject, he has so simply yet interestingly explained the concepts which were easy to comprehend and understand. Therefore, execution of the same should not be a difficult proposition. I'm sure you will all agree with me that we can now make an educated and well-informed head start into introduction of vocational skill and application-based subjects in our respective schools and integrate them into the school curriculum. This is the very objective of NEP 2020. CISC would like to place on record its sincere gratitude and appreciation to Dr. Mehrotra for sharing his views, thoughts, and expertise on the subject with all of us. Thank you so much, Dr. Mehrotra. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you to all the principals and teachers of our affiliated schools for your presence this morning. Your quest and curiosity to learn provide us with the right incentive and motivation to do a lot more. A special word of thank goes out to the research team of CISC for coordinating and help, helping to liaison between Dr. Mehrotra and CISC, thus making this online meeting a success. None of the work in the CISC is complete without the direct involvement of our Chief Executive and Secretary, Mr. Aratun. His energy is boundless and his spirit is unbeatable. Thank you, sir, for your guidance and vision. This formally brings this online meeting to a close. Thank you all. Do have a pleasant day ahead. Goodbye. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar.